what's up fellas, zombies. Once more, it's coming close to the end of the year. It's 10 28 at night. <coughs> December 29th, 2021, and we're ending it. Can we share memories of what the hell happened this year with each other? Bob is. I'm not sure so many damn memories, I don't think. I'm qualified to say anything about it. I've been talking about crap like that for that was how long. Well, maybe a uh, change somehow that I may have to go for. Either be the worst person ever or be the best person ever. People say, yes, go for the best person. Well, what's wrong with the worst person? What's wrong with worst person? Scratch your hands on that one, and here we think he's mad. Well, how many people are we dealing with right now are totally insane? And yet we call ourselves logical, we call ourselves functional, we call ourselves human, and we call ourselves normal. So where is the point of sanity and insanity? In dealing with what we're, de what we're dealing with these days, the basis of my of, of me changing the name from just you know just my name on the on the title page to regarding mental health illness, you know, something so like that, but you know dealing with mental health illness. You don't think anybody logically would think of that one? Or would want to. You don't think anybody <coughs> would think about that in the first place unless they're going through it? Unless they're suffering from it? You don't think in the right mind that anybody else would be talking about this big deal? About the issues dealing with them on a constant day by day basis or Maybe minute by minute basis if they're unlucky enough. We gas, orange juice. And yet, keep watering it down. You guys are disgusting, watery mess. And then you're still able, you're still drinking it because it still looks like it's still got orange juice in it, but you're still water. You still drink it. Scratching your head trying to figure out the logic in this one here. Uh huh. Try diluting powdered milk and mixing in with regular half milk into it just to extend it further. Of course, you'd probably say get out and get another gallon or so fresh milk and just knocks out the rest of the stuff. You know, you keep uh, mixing in and you keep adding into it, and you keep adding into it, and you keep adding into it, extending it further and further and further. Why? Okay. Things of doing of this nature, trying to extend trying to keep it going. Isn't that what we're doing as human beings? Isn't that exactly what we're trying to do as human beings these days? Extend as much as we can to still get life out of it until it's all done. Teabags. How long can you extend the life of a teabag? Easy enough, you 
pour hot water and then just sleep for a few minutes and drop the day and wake up. That's what people do, right? But what if you're still extending it? What if you have need for it or want for it? What if it's the last tea bag on earth? the thing we don't think about is the last last time we're going to be dealing with this the last time we're going to be thinking about that or not it's too late one of the many reasons one of the many logical points to make regarding having a having a section as I put out there for you to because I'm trying to explain things how a regular quote unquote person if I am regular if I am normal if I am sick how he's trying to cope with the illness of it and then they realize he was already insane to begin with but nobody would diagnose him Diagnosis. Nobody understood it. Nobody wanted to. Why would they? What was in it for them? Not a damn thing. So why would I say such things like this? I tick off people. I upset people. I am putting people at, on the edge because I talk about happened a long time ago and it keeps putting you into large and into smaller and smaller pieces. It's hard to find more and more of yourself. It's more hard to find yourself complete because you're only missing pieces inside of yourself. You're always ground up more and more. You're supposed to be putting yourself back together again. Eventually you're just a semblance. You're just Piecemeal. You're the weirdest mosaic ever. What was the original you in the first place? Why was there any sanity in you in the first place to show people who you were? And saying that, showing that, demonstrating that, it's oblivious. No wonder I don't get them in no wonder I don't get any kids at all because they don't want to deal with uh, stuff like this. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't even want to know the person going through it. The problem is, if it's their turn, if it's their time to go through it, then they're going to have a problem trying to struggle through it because they don't know how to deal with it at all. And you think I've got answers? A guru or not? I'm just a guy struggling for day by day, sometimes minute by minute. And going through this year of 2021 is the same thing like going through 2020, 2019, 2018, therefore. On and on. There were some days I was actually able to function without crying my eyeballs out. And able to get things done through a decades long uh, stretch. It's not only, it's since losing my last, you know, the, the last person that actually meant a damn to me back in 2018. My brother and I will talk about him. I will constantly say to him, I will sing praises if I have to. But I will show it. I will feel it. I will demonstrate it. They will drive people crazy. You know what? I really don't care. I really don't care. Because those people that you see in the cabinet posting, that last picture down below, 
Those last two people, my mother and my brother, and my dad, too. You understand, can you understand why it's hard to get out of the damn circle, out of the cycle, and to drive you crazy? I'm not talking about somebody else's cycle. I'm not talking about somebody else's mindset. I'm talking about my own. At one time, I was actually able to deal with people and not have fits, not have triggers, and it just functioned in life. Quote, unquote, normal, when I knew I wasn't normal because I had so much baggage on me that I no, I still had to struggle with it. But I didn't drink over it much. I'm done. But now, well, because drinking ain't gonna solve it. Neither is taking pills. Because people say, breathe the exercise, breathe the exercise. Okay, your body has so much oxygen, your damn blood starts to get destroyed up. You're stretching out your limbs. You're trying to do the Tai Chi. You're trying to do uh, whatever physical exercise is going over here. Something to get the brain away from the disparaging thoughts that keep popping up even in the middle of the night and zapping down a bit. A form of a nightmare to We have to extend our hands for more and more drugs, more and more pills, more and more liquor, more and more. But we still can't deal with it. And the only way for me to be able to deal with it is just confronting it on a day by day and going through the damn emotions left and right. There is no way to hide from this damn shit. It'll be year after year after year. I can't say whether or not it's going to get worse or get better. The only thing I can say is I have to keep struggling with this on a day-by-day basis. I have to keep doing this for now until the day I die. Then after that, heaven, I actually got in the afterlife. I have no clue. I have no clue. Right now, with a limited time and a limited lifespan I've got right now, I still have to make the choices whether or not to have this damn thing kick my ass on a constant basis or struggle and get back up again. Look at myself in the mirror. Get my laundry together and washed. Finally decide to get a haircut. Carry out the decision to get a haircut. Just to get some kind of normalcy. And then. See how I'm going to be able to function throughout the rest of the month. See how I'm going to be able to deal with the rest of the month. See how I'm going to be able to deal with anything for the rest of the month. And then for the next month, I have to do I have to do whatever it is I have to do to take care of me. I already know about the ghosts I've already got. I already know about the ghostly chains. I already know about the things holding on my ass. And just weighing heavily on I know those things. They're not the easiest damn things in the world. We all deal with them in our own way, in our own fashion. My function is I have to deal with it and I have to cope with the damn flashbacks and the feelings and the crying episodes and the depression left and right. Of course, the doctor's version of it is that, well, you know, therapy and we can talk it out. Well, this is what I've been doing for the past couple of years already on the YouTube is talking it out. Longer than that, doing a hell of a lot of audio recordings on devices like these, storing on drives in order to get my damn brain working. And it is working. It's just, I'm becoming more and more of a flabbergasm and, and flippity jibbity or something like that. I don't know. Poker mouth. I can't seem to shut up. But I can tell you one thing, though, throughout my life, 
I know there had been suppression. My brother had suppressed me. Didn't even realize it. And if he did, he still didn't want to hear me talk, I guess. He was intelligent, but he didn't want to hear me talk anyway. I was a bastard. But I've been talking, I've been talking, I've been talking. I've been talking, 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 talking. And it's like, shoot. But how do you get past this stuff? How do you identify without talking about it? How do you identify? How do you not identify with anything? What are you going to do? Just leave the shit alone? The hell was I'm dealing on a constant basis. I'm dealing with my life on a constant basis. I'm looking outside uh, and trying to see how life is. Dealing with itself outside the damn doors of my physical and mental prison. Some people are so worried about me, they're so giving me food every once in a while. Just to see how the hell this guy is doing. Because I haven't been out so much to get myself some decent food these days. So a plate here and a plate there. A token and a way of looking after me. It's much appreciated. Self, but it's much appreciated anyway. There used to be a time I was able to actually fix food. Well, I am fixing food. I'm just fixing garbage now. But it's still trying to sustain me. When you're dealing with the crap going on inside of your head left and right, you know, People want me to be positive. People want me to look at the positive stuff. And for a hell of a long while, I've been dealing with the both positive and negative about it, while struggling to keep money coming into the household, um, paying out the bills. I'm taking care of my mother, I'm taking care of my brother, and we all take care of each other. Yeah, we all got each other's uh, cases, that's right. And you, well, I'd say I became so tied up to them, so dependent. I might as well say codependent. But we've been codependent on each other to survival. We had our own barriers, and we kept breaking the damn things. We kept cutting in each other's throats up. But which family hasn't done that to each other in the first place? Come on, give me a break. When one of them gets to the point where they're dying and everything that they loved and everything that mattered to them is being taken away piece by piece by piece, you can see it in their eyes and in the manner and everything else about them, they're giving up on life. First, it's the subconscious saying, forget it. We're checking out, boys and girls. And it manifests itself into the physical. It manifests itself into the physical actions and mannerisms. Body trying to process. Portions of the body start to shut down left and right. More medical conditions happening left and right. It's like the subconscious is trying to kill the conscience. Try to kill the body itself. And I hate to say it, a monster, who did. They did. They killed her. She willed herself to die. She had two grown boys she thought they were going to be surviving in this world, you know, without her. And we had been living and trying to survive, me and my brother. I had been working until I get injured in a job and then all hell breaks loose and I can't work anymore. So fighting for disability and dealing with people in the county at the time for life support. And it was the hardest damn thing and seeing Ma going down the hill. Until finally she's hearing voices. She's hearing voices of family and of angels. And the next thing, she's becoming
listen to some of my old recording sounds. They really tore my ass apart. There was no recordings I made concerning about my brother's passing. The seeing how my brother deteriorated within a month or two, it really scared the hell out of me. But I had to steal myself. I mean, really tried to steal myself physically and mentally. I'm not reacting. I'm not feeling. I'm being a robot. Dealing with David's rapid physical deterioration and his terror. See it in the eyes. Hear it in the speech and in his, his mannerisms. I mean, after he stroked, he stroked in June or July, somewhere in there, of uh, 2018. And you'll really tell how fast. Speech, motor, cognitive abilities. He was still able to stand on two feet and still able to walk around, apparently, still. And I had a hard time trying to talk to the doctor or something. But the one thing he never he barely didn't even get a chance to do it was a durable power of attorney where I could take over and just help him out. But it got to the point where he couldn't breathe. His body was literally killing him. Whatever force was going on inside of him, it was not allowing him to live. And, go, and challenged us whatever he was going through and they and beat the damn thing. No. What sucked me down in that damn hole as well? So now, the question, I guess, from some people who maybe watch the video is how far down a hole I've gotten so far I'm hanging on a twig. Hanging on twig, and I'm trying to get a handhold so I can climb my way out of this damn shit. Um, and it's that easy. Because I'm sure as hell I'm not looking to die at this point. I didn't ask for this damn shit. I can tell you one thing, looking down at that damn hole over there, I can hear anything and everything that's screaming over one way or another. It's terrifying. Anything and everything that matters to me. Gone. Lost. Pain. Rip. Heart. Tossed out. You want, to, you want to know a gross way of seeing this, okay? Try this one. Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. Well, all right. The actor who played this guy, he did a very convincing job of a cartoon villain threatening people's lives, not to mention the Indies. A unique way of ripping out people's hearts and tossing it. The guy was already without a heart in the first place. But he had a biological pump. I mean, he actually did have a soul. He didn't have one. He sold it off to Cali. Uh, what was it? A Hindu god of destruction? multi art with the lake. Value death above everything else. Freaky. But how he would put his hands on you. And say some words. And dig into your head and dig into your chest. And rip out the damn heart. And see the damn thing flaming and beating. And you're saying a poor and you're saying the poor schluck. Going. <laughs> He's tender and he doesn't even realize it. Until he started into a bit of uh well, a lot of these fried so it's uh hard and the guy's laughing his head off. Alright. Uh no thank you. 
but having a heart ripped out of you. Pain and all. Life and all. You know, you're walking around as a shell and you're empty as hell and you feel the loss so deep. It's beyond hurt and pain. And all you can do is see it in, in that hand, just pumping it away. The love that you had for that person. Not an aching hole. I mean, there are certain other aspects you could use for a visual, a visualization on how, how to imagine the pain. But that comes close to it. Put my damn heart out. I'm supposed to feel something about it. I'm supposed to be happy about it. I'm supposed to smile all the time. And then it's no wonder I'm a grimacing. It's no wonder I'm grimacing all the time. Sometimes I can laugh at a little joke here and there because I get a little bit of humor. I haven't seriously laughed in a hell of a long while since I've actually seen something that actually triggered me to laugh. But actions and visualizations and, and cues and certain words, oh yeah. And I can't tell you how much look good I could try squeezing out of the damn air ducts. And how much air could be squeezed out. The lungs have already been squeezed out already. If there's any microbe left, it'll be squeezed out. My body be aching for more oxygen and spoiled over here. And yet I'll be screaming to the body, give me more oxygen. Body, we say, no, we need to live. Inhale, inhale, inhale. So I inhale. And then I exhale again. I squeeze even harder. Because I'm crying so damn badly and I'm screaming silently in this damn thing. There is no loud scream that can enter the vocal cords it's like a silent scream. You're just ready to ready to blow apart. <laughs> it's a gross thing. It's like a bad idea. But that's how the grief and that's how the trigger bombs are. I mean, usually I have a Cinderella coaster, but screw that noise. It's a trigger bomb. I'll see something concerning about family. So I'll see something about families trying to do something or getting together or not getting together or having issues in Sweden over here, but they're trying to be a family in Sweden over here. Trying to show how grateful and loving they, they are in Sweden over here. And Rio and I are reunion sons of mine. I see all these reunion sons of mine. And all I can see at that point is, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. Screaming, squeezing, being a guy who's just trying to end his life right there. I don't, I'm waiting for the heart to burst. I'm waiting for the blood vessels to burst somewhere. Uh, to get a blood clot going and then we have an aneurysm and then I'm dead. Yeah, I joke about it right this moment over here because I may think the damn thing's funny and a lot of people say, don't do that! It's serious! Yes, it is serious. But I'm laughing at it. I'm laughing at it because I think it's totally serious and totally comical. That's how the way the logic is working at this point over here. That's the way the screwed up thinking is at this point over here. But then again, it's my thinking at this point. And I've had it for a hell of a long while. I've had it ever since... I don't know, how, many, how many years since I've had this damn thing cracked open. So yeah. I haven't been considered what they, what they would think of a normal kid. Why didn't my mom know about it? 
probably too damn blind for it. <laughs> she kept seeing more and more of my brother's uh, issues concerning about his behavioral health situation. That uh, every time she kept seeing me, it was always my damn heart driving her nuts. But it was not my own brain or anything else happening. Nobody suspected it during that time. Did anybody ever ask or actually did any medical studies back in the 70s concerning about if anybody actually survived and came back from heaven? What the hell they were going through afterwards? Nobody. No studies on record. And if there were, I haven't found any yet. I would love to see Harvard studies or medical journals back in the 70s concerning about uh, from the late 60s to early 70s regarding kids surviving heart surgeries, dying and coming back to life, and how their lives were changed. Nobody does studies on this damn thing, I tell you. I could tell them horror stories about this damn shit. But this is why I'm doing the logs, and this is why I'm doing the channel in the first place. Because I'm telling you all horror stories about it, alright? I've seen so many damn shows coming on Telling us about people who die in the afterlife and coming back to life and how they're profoundly changed. Yeah, they all want to go back to heaven because they found heaven was a lot, a lot better than reality was. But the thing is, they deal with reality because they have to pass off messages. Messages to life. To life forms down here. Saying that. I'm functioning. I'm dealing. I'm coping. I'm not doing as best as I could, but I'm dealing. I'm coping. I haven't had much of a life growing up. No one to blame on myself. But then again, I'm tired of blaming myself anything for everything. And I've been beating myself up all my life on a lot of stuff. That wasn't my fault. And even though I can blame it on people, it doesn't change the damn past at all. So, you know, pray about it, toss it out, hope the ghosts don't come back to haunt your ass. Meanwhile, deal and function right now as it is. That means if you deal with your own body functions right now, drive you insane if you have an inch you gotta scratch the damn thing. Give you a bit of sweat down down your down your skin somehow. It's causing the irritation on the skin to register in the nerve endings to all the way to your brain. Saying there is an inch to be scratched. Scratch it, take care of it, damn thing. Okay, fine, I'll take care of the damn thing until it gets hurt. Until it gets sore. Okay, is it done? Fine. Of course, you got to stay now on your clothing. But this is it. Now, anything looking forward towards tomorrow? I don't know. I haven't planned anything. Because every time I keep planning something, it always screws up. So if I don't plan anything, and I just do, so I don't disappoint myself as much. For example. For example. Simple things like getting get stinky bags of garbage out of here. Once that's done, then I got stinky bags of laundry to take care of. Once that's done, breakfast. And then deal with whatever happens that day. Little things. Little things, little steps. That great big adventurous steps that I used to take as a younger man. I was an older man. It's a simple baby damn steps would drive me crazy. The things I have to do for myself. And sometimes I don't like doing the things in the first place, but I have to. Why? Because it is. We got rain outside. I can't change it. I can't control it. I can't take care of my uh, little dog outside for a walk. Unless we're both going to drown out there. And if we both drown out there, well, there's... I guess I'm out of luck. 
but I'm not going to be able to walk out there in the kind of slippers I've got on right now with open toes. Uh-uh. Besides the fact I've got socks on there trying to keep my feet warm. And now i got to deal with that. Right. One thing after another after another. And this is what happens. Of course, I know if I have regular and old people or dealing with whatever you're dealing with looking at me saying, just get on with it! Ah, uh, you're not here. You're not here. You're not in here, you're not here. If you were here, you would see, you would know. But you're not. So, I deal. You don't. Therefore, your opinion doesn't matter. I can't control the weather. I can't control the, the water outside. But I can't control my reactions as much as I can. The thoughts are different thing over there. But I have to control the actions out here right now. Since we're talking late at night, and we are talking that's what, 5 or 6 after 11? At this point, my body despite the fact it's sleep deprived in the first place, would order me to go back to bed and sleep. I gotta sleep. Yes, I gotta sleep. Why? Because if I don't, I'll go insane. But I, I'm not sane, I'm already insane. That doesn't matter. Go pop a good blood test. But what if I don't want to pop a pop blood test? Then you go to bed, you go to sleep. But if I happen to go to bed, not pop a blood vessel, then nothing happens. I have to go to bed and sleep. It don't make sense. It's at that point, I probably have my voice of my brother saying, John, shit the hell, I've been going to bed. So at this point, I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to pop this in a little bit later. Not there on the internet. On a different date. But just something to tell the people that, yay, late at night I didn't lose my mind. I just found out I still don't have it as of yet.